Hey guys, it's Heather from Tomatoes, Poppies, and Everything Gardening. I don't know if you can see that uh, baker's rack behind me. It's a makeshift kind of gardening plant center that I have in my dining room. And there's an empty shelf there. We are going to sit here together and seed uh, some of these empty flower <clears throat> pods, cell trays that I have available. I'm only going to do one tray in here. Um, in that indoor space because um, you know I'm doing some winter sewing I'm doing some direct winter sewing and I just I'm done I'm tired <laughs> I'm ready to get on with spring um, I'll just direct sew into the ground when things warm up just a little bit more so I'm just going to do a few select things I want to share with you what those are today and we can talk about it as I go. So let's get started. So I have a mess of seeds here on the table. I went through all of my seeds last night looking for my coleus and um, I did find it. But while I was going through my flower seeds, I thought, okay, let's pick out some that will fit into this tray that we're going to put here in the dining room. Um, this tray is going to go outdoors and I need to add a little bit more soil. And then I'm going to do one row of red cabbage. My daughter just requested that and then some heading lettuces. Um, so this is what we're gonna work with today. So I've got nine of the small cups, and then I've got three of these long, um, I don't know what you would call them, pencil. They're probably like little pencil storage cases. So these are the trays that I bought at Target, and then I drill the holes in there. So what I'm gonna focus on are seeds that need light to germinate. And I think I've got a pretty good selection started here. Um, let's see. I've just got seeds everywhere. These actually need to go outside. So let me pause for a second while I organize this really okay, quickly. So I have seeded this entire tray. And I'm going to show you really quickly what I put down. Um, if I can manage <laughs> with one hand. Um, so I did sew one big tray of strawberry gomprina, one of the larger long trays of the three there. I'll put a picture right here from Baker Creek. That's where I got the seeds. I've grown the traditional gomprina before that's like the bi uh, tricolor with the pretty like whitish gray, pink, a darker kind of um, purpley pink as well. And those are gorgeous, but I wanted to try something new this year. Um, so what I have in this tray is the um, perennial geranium and there were only five seeds. I like to use that in the backyard where it's more shady. Um, I did a thing of Bells of Ireland. I did a packet of evening prim primrose. I have a specific spot I want to put that. I did some Rose Queen Salvia, Salvia, and um, uh, some Russian Sage. It's like a dwarf a bush, so it won't get as big as my other Russian Sage. And then I did um, one of the bigger trays, just kind of mixed the seeds all together, and I did um, a silver and a violet aster. So this is like the Chinese aster, it's an annual. It's not like the native asters that come back every year as a perennial. It's just an annual that I wanted to grow these two colors together because I thought they looked so pretty. Um, I've got some Celosia and I'm doing the um, Flamingo this year. I have bought this as a plant before a couple years ago just when I was walking through Lowe's I saw it. Um, so when I saw the seeds I thought, oh, that would be cute if I can grow my own. I usually grow some variety of Celosia every year. Last year I did Fire Chief, and it was fine. It got really leggy and tall, though, even though it was in full sun. And before that, um, the year before that, I grew the one that's like a multicolor, kind of like a globe, large, huge head. Um, maybe if I can find a picture, I'll put it there. But um, it looked like a brain. They look like brains to me. And those did self-seed. So I actually had that same plant the next year, which was last year. Um, so I've got jewels of Opar. Um, and then in one of the big trays, you can see I've got a divider. 
I did half of the Ruby Bell, Ruby Bell's Hookra. And then I did the other half with my Estilbe. And I just dropped the seeds on the ground, so they're in there, trust me. Um, <laughs> it was just like, how many seeds was that? I can read it from here. It's 50 seeds. Didn't look like 50 seeds. Actually, it says 35. Uh, but they're in there. Hopefully they'll germinate. And then um, my pin cushion, the Black Knight. I love this flower. I've grown it three years in a row, I think. It is so gorgeous. It's just an annual, but it's stunning. I mean, I spend so many pictures on my phone trying to capture the color of this flower um, during the summer. And I can't. It takes forever um, just to ca capture this color. It is just magnificent. Um, I love this flower. All right, so that's what I've got seeded here. All of these need some light and a little warmth. That's why I'm starting them in here. Um, so now we're going to move on to doing something I've been putting off that needs to get done ASAP, which is we need to separate these lavender seedlings. So there are six in here. I'm going to leave one, the one that's more in the center of this pot, but the other five I'm going to pot up into little pots so that we can get them hardened off for outside. Um, I think what I'm also going to do, maybe not today because it might be too much trauma to separate them, pot them up, and to give them a trim, to pinch them back. I may wait about a week to pinch them back. Um, but you can see these guys have grown so much. I did a short on this planter uh, when I started the lavender. I think it was the last week of December. I was able to germinate this um, in the house in this pot. Uh, but now it's time to separate them and we're gonna work on that in just one All second. Right. So, hey Tonto, you gonna help me with the lavender? It is somewhat toxic to dogs. Um, so I have it on the high shelf of that planter. So first we need to clear out the space. So um, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got like creeping thyme seeds all over this table. I need to scoop into a little bowl and take outside. Um, so what I've got left here, I think we're gonna consider winter sowing and or direct sowing. A lot of these we can direct sow, um, like this tick seed. That'll be one I could right now. Uh, African daisy is a cool weather thing, but I'll probably put that in a milk jug really wanted some of this Carex, so I need to get that going. Um, I have a few seed packs in the freezer, so I'm like all over the place here, but we do need to get going with some of these flowers. Love four o'clocks, but these are good for direct sowing. Um, there's another one I like to direct sow, and I think I'm out of the seeds. I may have to get some of those real quick. It's in the Mallow family. It's Silver Cup, and it's gorgeous. Let me see if I can find a picture. I'll put it right here. Um, I need to get those seeds ASAP. Oh, and this is kind of pretty, but kind of ugly. So I winter sowed this last year. Maybe I can direct sow that. I think maybe just the winter sowing method kind of made them really wonky. I had several flowers that did that last year that were really uh, stunted. But this is a pretty flower, but it's not such a pretty foliage or plant. It gets really ugly quick. Anyway, so I just need to go through these and figure out what we're going to do and get started um, later with that. Right now we need to clean the surface so we can take care of the lavender. I wish you guys could smell. This lavender smells so nice. So I think what I'm going to do is leave the center guy here in the pot and then take out five of the other plants that are growing. We're going to put them into these little mini I think these are two inch by two inch pots with some soil. I did moisten it and I think I did moisten it just a wee bit too much. Um, but that's okay. We'll work with it and see if we can get these beautiful lavender guys potted up. Just moistened the soil more than I normally do for lavender. And I'm going to see if that will help me try to wiggle one of these guys out. Don't want to damage the roots. Remember, I've been growing these guys since the last week of December. I started them from seed. Wow, they have pretty deep roots. So I'm not pulling. I am just kind of going under my finger 
I'm trying to lift. Wow, look at how long that root is. Wow. Okay, I still have not found the bottom of the root. I'm just going to take my time. Do not want to cause any more damage. Do not want to pull. Oh man, that's pretty deep. All right, there we go. So that is a lavender root. Look at that. It's long. It is a long root. Okay, so I'm just going to make a hole in one of these tiny pots. And then we are going to try to, I didn't know this guy's root would be that big. I would have put a little bit more dirt in this cup, a little more soil. So I think I actually will do that because I did not know their roots were that deep. So I'm going to try to maybe curl that root a little bit around and then just gently kind of tuck it into this pot and he should do fine. I'm just going to bury to the, bury to the, put it down to the base of where the plant starts growing. It's going to be my soil line so that none of the root is above the dirt. Oh, can y'all see that? So he is tucked in. You can see it's already got it branching going on. So since this was such a traumatic little event for this guy to get transplanted, um, I'm going to wait probably five plus days, seven, before I do uh, a trimming to pinch it. So we'll come above one of these leaf nodes. Probably I would do it right here. Actually, I'm tempted to go ahead and just do it now. I would pinch right here above the leaf nodes. Pinch with my just my finger tip. I can do that. And then I think what I would do is take these two leaves off and then put this in water and see if I could root a whole new plant. So we're not going to do that today because I feel like, you know, it's already got some trauma going on. So I only had actually a total of five seedlings. I thought there were six in the pot, but I think because they're starting to branch so much, I was counting like, um, I don't know, one of these guys is too, probably this one, because it, look at all the branching. It smells so good. Oh, I can't take it. Um, one of my kids actually could smell it from the dining room all the way in the kitchen. And then I left this one guy who was naturally kind of situated more towards the middle. And he will get pinched too when I pinch these guys. Maybe I'll make a short about that when I pinch the lavender. And just to see if we can grow a new plant from those little pinched cuttings. So that's it guys. Today was all about flowers. And um, I'm going to get these guys back over there on that baker's rack that I use as a growing station here in the dining room.